So uh, the guy that is about to uh, join us on the stage, I've come to learn, is one of the most brilliant marketers I've ever seen. It's kind of funny, Elise, uh, he's part of the reason, half of the reason, I guess, um, that a lot of you all are in this room. It's because of him and his team and what they do. Um, and it, the funny thing is, too, even behind the scenes with releasing ASM, I'm sitting there Skyping this guy and like asking him questions and getting his feedback. He's absolutely brilliant. Hard working uh, too. That's the other thing that amazes me. Not only brilliant, but they're, they're the hardest working people I've met. They're, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I'll, I'll start asking him marketing questions and he'll start pulling things from philosophy and mythology. And I'm like, where do you come up with this crap? I was like, you're just trying to sell something. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. You all are going to be blown away. So let's welcome to the stage, give a standing ovation to Jason Fladlian. <laughs> Thank you for that. I can honestly say I deserve it. <laughs> what are we going to cover today? We're going to cover context of how you list your Amazon products and how people determine the decisions that they make on who they buy. They have 16 decisions that they can choose from on page one, same on page two and three. So if we filter the context of how people make decisions on Amazon and we figure out a better way to get them to decide to choose us, does that make us more money? Yes, it does, okay. We're also gonna cover impulse. Now, you could say Amazing Selling Machine, which is a $3,500 course or four easy payments of $1,000 spaced 30 days apart, right? It's a high ticket item. Is that an impulse purchase? <laughs> a lot of you in this room impulsively purchased it through my affiliate link, right? You can make anything an impulse purchase because at the end of the day, all emotional decisions are made impulsively, right? So how can we use that to our advantage? What do we know about creating impulsive decisions that are in the customer's best interest, right? That also makes us money. Acclamation. Would you agree with me that shopping on Amazon is different than shopping on a website that sells the same physical product? There are certain climate things that I consider when I create my listings on Amazon and I sell my products based on what I know people are used to having and what they're not used to having as an experience, an acceptable experience on Amazon. If we dial into that, we make more money, right? <clears throat> Images. Do you know 97% of the US population doesn't read a single nonfiction book a year? I bet they would if it, had, it was picture books, right? <laughs> picture books for adults, maybe that's what we get into on Amazon, right? I'm gonna talk to you about what I've discovered with images where we can sell stuff to people without them ever reading a single word of our copy on our Amazon listings, right? I'm gonna give you what I have found to be the number one persuasive element to selling products on Amazon, okay? We're gonna get specific examples of how this is done, so pay careful attention. And finally, we're gonna talk about the ultimate review trick, the Google Bold trick, the iPath and the symmetry trick. Here's conversion in a nutshell. Same traffic, more money. You like that? Everybody wants to talk about getting more traffic. What are you doing with the traffic you already have? That's where we make our money. We have a very small list relative to the other people that we competed with when we promoted ASM, right? But we converted better. Same thing with Amazon listings. 
Exponential, not incremental. Here's what happens. When you increase your conversion, then you increase your traffic. You don't just go up a little bit in sales, you go up a lot. That's why you hear people say, I started with zero and next month I'm selling $20,000, right? Finally, that Amazon love. What does Amazon usually do when your product converts very well? They push it up in the rankings, right? When it's pushed up in the rankings, that results usually in more money, right? Here are our two challenges that we're going to face today. Time, skill. Now, if you want to be the world's greatest persuasion expert, as some people have referred to me, you got to put in a lot of time. It's actually pretty easy. Just give seven years of your life, day and night, and voila, you might be one of the best, right? And skill is another issue because there are certain things that only people that have certain dispositions to can master while others can't master, right? So my goal here today is to give you the things that take the least amount of time and the least amount of skill that give the most amount of results, okay? <laughs> simple. We need simple, right? Quick. We need quick, don't we? Powerful, all right? Power of an image, huh? Here's my qualifications to teach us if you don't know who I am yet. I am the three time winner of ASM, affiliate number one, one, two, three times. If ASM4 comes out, I hope to defend my title, right? <laughs> Critiques. As part of it, and I don't know if I was smart or if I was insane at the moment I decided this, but every single person who bought through my link, ASM, I said you can have a 20 minute critique with me. 1,800 people later, I've seen some things. <laughs> I have probably critiqued more listings on Amazon and looked at more things related to Amazon listings than anybody on the planet, right? 10, 10M2Y. In the last two years, actually a lot less than the last two years, we have sold over $10 million in stuff, both physical, both online, both offline. So let me show you what I've discovered when it comes to Amazon listing success. There's really only four things that you have to focus on. Here's the first one, images. That's the most important. Here's the second one, title. Here's the third one, bullet points. Here's the fourth one, description. That's it. Everything else, forget about it for now. When you're doing 50,000 or 100,000, you might want to get more advanced, right? If you're not, do this. Images, bullets, description, title. Here's a consideration that you must have. Context. Here's the second one. Content. Content in the wrong context is worth nothing, okay? Content with the wrong context is worth nothing. So if I go into a room of people who've taken a vow of poverty and I give the best pitch you've ever seen in your life, I'm screwed. But if I go into a room with people who have a lot of money who have now just taken a vow of poverty, and I've got to convince them to get rid of their money somehow, some way. I don't have to be very good to get them to give their money to me, right? Context and content are your two considerations when it comes to optimizing your Amazon listing, okay? Here's what I think of when I think of context. What are the unique properties a general Amazon consumer has, which we can use to increase our conversion on Amazon? This is where I start. What are the unique properties a general Amazon consumer has, which we can use to our advantage to increase our conversion on Amazon? Well, let me tell you what they are. Amazon buyers. 
They're impulsive by nature. If they wanted to do research, they wouldn't come to Amazon. But they're also patient. What does that mean? How can somebody be simultaneously impulsive yet patient? Well, you're going to have to find out. You're going to have to listen. I'll show you. Empowered. What does that mean? They're empowered. Fourth, acclimated, as we discussed earlier. And fifth, transparent. These are the five qualifications that an Amazon customer has that I dial into when I help my customers optimize their listings, many of which I have taken many of our customers and doubled or tripled their conversion or quadrupled their conversion for their Amazon listings. And these are the five considerations that I make. Impulsive, patient, empowered, acclimated, transparent. Okay? Let's look a little deeper at each one of these. Impulsive. My favorite. Secretary theory goes like this. It's Monday morning. Who here has noticed that they get a lot of sales more so than usual on Monday as opposed to any other day of the week? A lot of people here, right? Here's my theory behind this. You get into work Monday. You're slogging still from the weekend. You get a few moments at work when your boss isn't looking or you get a break and you want to kill some time so you get on the internet, which everybody has now at work it seems, and you do some shopping. And you're looking over your shoulder, making sure the boss isn't seeing you, right? Are you going to be super price sensitive? No. Are you going to worry about whether this thing is pure and great and the best, whatever? No, right? You're impulsive. Now, that's just a use case, okay? There are many situations where people impulsively purchase stuff on Amazon. Another situation is because a friend is telling them over lunch that they should buy this new product, and so they pull it up on their mobile device on Amazon and buy it right there on the spot with the one-click technology, right? So people make the mistake of thinking that most customers on Amazon are looking at what they're buying. And I can show you example after example that I've discovered where I find a product that sells two different types. They'll sell one type, let's just say it's two ounces. And they'll sell a second type that's four ounces, right? And instead of buying four ounces, people will buy two bottles of the two ounce and pay $20 more, right? Have you seen that? Have you experienced that? That's not rational, right? Because they don't look. They don't even think. They say, this looks cool, let me buy it. Click, done. Impulse. How do we appeal to that? That's what we always ask ourselves. Patient, though. You impulsively purchase, and then you wait. Prime members wait typically two days to get their product, maybe more on the weekends, right? Non-prime can go three to five. If they really want it, they'll take the shipping, the expedited shipping, right? But you got to remember now, if they're impulsive yet patient, how can you make them feel immediately relieved on the point of purchase when somebody purchases something, right? That's, that's your first payoff, you got to consider the emotional state somebody's going to be in when they go to click that add to cart button on Amazon, right? you got to make it feel like, ah, oh, I've done something. I bought this product, and that's good enough for now to hold me over until it arrives two days later. This is how we consider, and this is how we look when we think and sit down and optimize our listings, right? Empowered. What do I mean by this? Amazon users have all the power. You don't have any of the power, right? They don't like you, next. They'll pick whoever they want to pick, or nothing at all, right? And you don't have the power in this sell situation. The Amazon customer does. Now, if you get on a webinar with me and I'm selling you something like Amazing Selling Machine, I have the power. As long as you're on that webinar, I control the whole environment and I control everything and there's nothing to compare it with directly at the spot. But Amazon users are empowered and don't underestimate that. You wanna have what I call glancing superiority. At a glance, when they look at these different products, yours immediately looks superior. So when the Amazon customer clicks on your listing, they feel like they're doing so from a position of power, like yes, I'm smart, I know this is the best, I can see this is the best, click. 
It's always good to make your customers feel good when they purchase from you. It's not required, but it's a good idea, right? Acclimated. There are certain things that people are used to seeing on Amazon, and there are certain things they're not used to seeing on Amazon. So we always have to weigh whatever we do with what I call the acceptable system shock. So those big giant orange or purple or blue titles you guys are putting in your product descriptions, I don't do that. It's too much of a system shock in my estimation, and I have the data to prove it in conversion rates. With rare exception, in general, you come across looking like a used salesman when you put five different colors on your product description and with these giant different things on them, right? And if you go on there in your product description and you hard sell them, right? That doesn't work on Amazon because customers are not used to seeing that. Now there's some things that we can do that they're not used to seeing that work in our advantage, right? But you have to weigh it. Is this going to shock somebody so much because they're not used to this as a normal Amazon checkout experience or not? So look at your listings that you already have and say, is there some stuff here that maybe we need to blend in a little bit more with what Amazon has and still stick out enough to get attention, right? Transparent, this is my favorite thing. It's all right in front of your eyes. You wanna know what makes your customers tick? You wanna know what gives them that glancing superiority? You wanna know what makes them feel empowered? You wanna know what they're used to and what they like and what they don't like? It's right there. You just gotta do research, right? How many reviews have you read on Amazon just for fun? Yes, I have read several thousand reviews. And think of the insights I have gained from reading those reviews. I read reviews in my category. I go to my subcategory of what my product's under and I click on the top 100 and I read those, right? I go to existing other subcategories that are somewhat semi-related and I read those reviews. I'm a review junkie. It also helps when I have my friends and family buy my products and say, this is the types of reviews you should write and point them directly to them, right? But shh, we don't do that, right? It's all right in front of your eyes. So let's break down some specific examples. Let's start with the images. The image is the most important thing on your Amazon listing. Your images are the most important thing on your Amazon listing. Impulsive people don't read. They glance. Images get the clicks. So when they're looking at 16 examples on a page, they almost always decide to pick on the one that has the image that captures their eye, right? Impressions create carryover. So if I came up here in a Speedo, even before I opened my mouth, you would have already made some judgments against me, right? Impressions create carryover. So when they go into your listing, how should they feel? And does your image create that feeling? Let's do a comparison. Which one's better? That's a trick question. These are both damn good, actually. And you say, Jason, how's this stupid Indian healing clay really good? I'll tell you what, it looks like your grandma's special concoction that she slaps in a jar and puts a homemade label on and sends it over to you when you're sick, right? That's the impression that creates. It's ugly, it's dumb, it's stupid in my opinion. I mean, they hired probably the worst graphic designer they could find to make this. But do you know this product consistently sells in the top 100 of beauty? Sometimes it sells in the top 10 of beauty. Now you look at the other one, the clay mask avocado and the oatmeal, right? What impression does that create for you? Professional, slick, right? It polished, corporate, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if that's bad or good. It's not that great though, is it? You would think at a glance, I would be one more like the clay mask than the Indian healing clay, right? Now, the clay mask can still sell well good, but I don't think these images do them any favors. They're okay, though. And at certain times, if you wanna go high-end, these are required, because the Indian healing clay, for I don't know why, they keep lowering their prices. They're now usually an add-on item. 
I don't know, we make a lot of money, let's lower our prices. Don't do that, okay? That's what they're doing. But if, if this thing was gonna sell for 100 bucks, a jar, you couldn't do it like that. Then you'd have to look good, right? But you have to consider, sometimes the homespun feeling works best. It's all about the impression that it creates, right? Your main image, as Amazon refers to it, I call it the featured image. This one is the most important out of all your images because it shows up in the search results, right? It shows up on the page when it says frequently bought together and customers who viewed this bought this and all the other millions of places that Amazon puts these listings, right? That's your featured image, it's your main image, right? And here's my favorite thing, it's what shows on the Amazon ads. So when we design our main images, we design them specifically with Amazon ads in mind because I run Amazon ads on every single listing that I ever create. That is the only advertising I know of where you deliberately try not to make a profit and fail at it. I can't, I can't, I've never, I can't lose money on Amazon ads. I just can't do it. And especially can't do it when you make that main image also be attractive if somebody sees the advertisement. Which by the way, Amazon's adding more and more advertising space every single day, have you noticed that? God, I love it. Every time they add a new block of advertising or test it, I'm like, yes, more money. Now here are the hinges, because little hinges swing big doors when it comes to the success of how I look at optimizing my Amazon image. The little simple things that can make all the difference in the world, right? Color. So here is a Bluetooth shower speaker. Great product, by the way. And three out of the top five are the exact same color and the exact same model, right? So if I was going to go into this business, I would do what I want to do blue? Maybe. But if I were to do blue, I would want my blue to look more vibrant than these blues. Because look at them, they're kind of washed out, aren't they? You pay somebody five bucks on Fiverr, they doctor up the photo a little bit, they give a little bit of contrast, a little bit of depth, and by the way, no drop shadows here, there's no dimension here, and blue, you could win with blue. It's not just about being different, it's about standing out, right? Now, ideally, I would like to go with a different color than blue, and I'd also like to go with a different shape than like a hockey puck shape that we have there, right? Do we go with pink? No, probably not. We isolate half the market. You think some guy wants to buy a pink Bluetooth shower speaker and stick it on the wall when he takes a shower, right? I doubt it. I doubt it. And by the way, they sell both colors. Do you see that? The same brand is selling both blue and pink. That's smart. But they realize we're catering to specific markets now, but that's how color can influence the impulse, right? Space, compare. We have two that utilize very little space and we have two images that utilize a lot of space, right? Which is better? It's hard to tell, right? I think something that utilizes a decent amount of space but not all space in general usually works best. This is something we test though and they're never always the same. Sometimes that full image, and I know Amazon doesn't want you to do that, right? But wait, hey, look at they do it all done, right? To have full background image, sometimes that works better. Usually though, if we can utilize as much space, but still leave some white space in there so it doesn't look too crowded, okay? I'm standing here this morning watching a sea of people run in here like a stampede to get seats, right? No space, freaks you out a little bit, right? So we want some space, but not so much space. Because consider this, if you're glancing at that, you can barely see it. Do you, does that give you the glancing superiority that we talked about? No. Symmetry. Which one stands out? The third one, right? It's pointing the wrong way. We'll talk about that in a bit. But it stands out. Now look at the different colors. Uh, why? Why do they all have the same color? <laughs> I don't know. Their loss, our gain, right? Look at how the space is utilized. The second one does a very good job of utilizing space. It covers enough space, still gives it room to breathe, right? Packaging. Sometimes you might not be able to differentiate on the product itself, 
but you can always differentiate on the packaging. Now, if your packaging is really ugly, don't put it on your Amazon listing, okay? Don't. I see people do it all the time. They're so proud of it. But if it don't help sell, don't show the package. Now, look at these Muslim uh, swaddle blankets, and here's the third one down there. It has a great packaging. It's probably the exact same one as the fifth one, right? But which one stands out? That packaging stands out because no other listing on page one has that packaging. So sometimes packaging is your only competitive advantage. Same product, same everything else, but you have a cool package and nobody else does. What might it cost you extra? A dollar a unit? Okay. It's not about what it costs us. It's about how much it makes us, right? Packaging is very important. iPath. Which of these images is pointing in the correct position? The fourth one, do you know why? The eye follows where the image points. Images have direction. Now those big block images don't point anywhere, they point straight at you, so there's no eye path. But guess where the first one points? Down and to the left, it points to the second image. Very often I've identified where number two sells better than number one on Amazon, because the image they use on number one is like a giant arrow that says, here's my competition, click on them, right? And number two is like one of those alternative rock covers with the group standing there not staring directly at the camera, right? He's just staring off in the space and number three is joining him. Number four is all down in the dumps and he's pointing directly down to the one below him. Number, f- or number that's uh, number five. Number four is the only one pointing correctly. Now they screwed it up because they put a bump in the road for where the eye's supposed to go, right? The eye goes to the title. Do you know why the eye goes to the title? Because that's what we want them to click on, right? You point the eye in the direction of the title without putting a speed bump on it. Because now they get distracted along the way. It might make a small difference, but it's worth making that difference. So check where your images point. That's a big thing I see people screw up all the time. Google Bold. So I had this theory that we tested starting uh, in May of last year. You know when you go and you search in, in Google and the, the phrase or the keyword that you put in there, they bold that out? My theory was because we've been so used to that for so many years, it's been ingrained in us to be a little bit responsive to something like that. So I took that theory and with all the hundreds of customers in ASM that we had back then, I started testing it. And every single one of them that used this reported a positive result. Okay, here's what you do. You want to make your keyword, your main keyword, able to be read at a glance. So this is black African soap. Do you see the first listing? Does it have a keyword that you can read at a glance? No, it has uh, doo-doo osin, right? That should say black African soap, and the logo should be this small. Flip it, right? The second one, can you read a damn word on there? No. People want to read labels without clicking on labels. The third one is the only one that you can read. Not only is it pointing in the wrong direction, but it's so small and so tiny. They screwed that up. The fourth one looks like some like Colombian hash or something, right? (laughs) Maybe that's why it's number four. If you went into this market and you had a package and you put African black soap in bold and people could read it from the thumbnail, you're looking pretty good. Now say you don't have a packaging where you can do that. You know what you do? You just put it text on top of the image, right? Problem solved. Good stuff so far? Nice. I do this stuff. I do this for a living. I love it. I call these extras. This is where you should put your your certification labels or whatever in general because they don't mess with the eye path and at the same time they grab the eye at a glance, right? So here's a good example, that's one example of extras. Sometimes extras is the ingredient or some sort of thing that you can articulate as an advantage or that looks cool, right? Sometimes the extra is this amazing trash can that was seen on NBC, CBS, Fox, and in whatever, right? One of my customers, by the way, smart guy. This trash can is so good that they write about it on Fox. You ever seen an Amazon listing with that on it, right? Now it'd be better to have good housekeeping and all those things, but maybe we get there next, right? And then stuff like this with, the, with a derma roller with the different things that stick out there. 
These little extras, if you go into a market where nobody's using extras, they stick out like sore thumbs, which is good. If you go into a market where everybody's using extras, guess what you do? You don't use them, right? Remember, context is as important as content. For the other images, because we just talked about the main images, we have more leeway to sell harder and to differentiate from the competition. So here's the, what I call the 99 design solution. They're so proud with their renders that they give you six different images from every angle that you could look at from this bottle. It's okay to do this if you're just starting and getting going, right? Don't do this after you start selling product. Now most of you in the room are guilty of this. So become unguilty of this, right? <laughs> I love this one. Call this the action shot, right? Let's torture a baby. This product sells like crazy, too. If you can show your product in use and make it look good, which this is debatable, people will resonate better with that, right? Here's one, coupon, right? Yeah, I know Amazon doesn't like this stuff, but hey, if my competition is using it and I'm just being a good boy scout, I might win points in the afterlife, but I do so at the expense of making money, right? So if we... We get aggressive, we run coupons until somebody tells us not to. Infographics, right? This guy will probably sue me for using this because he's so aggressive with everything that he does, but this is a great example of an infographic and somebody can see this as an extra image, right? This is my favorite thing. A letter of certification from Cosmic Skin Solutions, right? You know how easy it is to get one of those things and put some fancy schmancy stuff on the bottom of it? Nobody will read this even, but they'll glance at it and be like, damn, this is legit, right? <laughs> this is the right way to do com comparison. Don't put your competitors in here. Guess what? You're just giving them free advertising. Instead, pick your competitors, compare them against them, and then at the end say, competitor A, competitor B, competitor C, and show how yours is superior. Now, by the way, they screwed up the color, didn't they? They made the red the good, and they made the green the bad. But at least they're trying, right? If your product has a lot of moving parts or if people really want to know what they get, then you've got to create an image that shows them everything that they get, right? So many people screw this up. Now, it's not applicable to you if you don't have a product that has a lot of moving parts, but if you do, do something like this to show it and demonstrate it. I call this a action logo. So your logo is a selling point if you have one that's designed that looks really nice. Because people like stuff that looks really nice, especially when they pay a lot more for it. So this is an example of the product in use with a real money shot on the logo. That's good. Before and after. If you sell anything related to results, you've got to do before and after. And it's arguable whether that after is anything to brag about, right? <laughs> but it's still good to use. And I call this one instruction. Have a thing, if your thing needs to be used in a certain way, put the instruction right on there. I can't tell you how many times we sell stuff and our customers write to us and like, I don't know how to use this. Well, then why did you buy it? <laughs> so now we help them know how to use it before they even buy it. Tip, get inspiration and ideas from what complementary products that have similar packaging design, okay? So if I'm going to sell like a raspberry ketones, I'm not gonna look at my competition that sells raspberry ketones, look at all their images and say, I like this one, I like that one, let's model it after this one. Two reasons. Reason number one, I don't wanna copy my competition. I wanna be better than my competition. Reason number two, you don't get inspiration from looking within the industry, because of what everybody else does. So we say, hmm, people who buy raspberry ketones, would they buy fish oil? Maybe. Let's go over and look at the packaging in fish oil, similar to raspberry ketones. Let's swipe our ideas from there bring them into the industry and be the first ones to use it. And then after you're successful and start selling, guess what happens? Everybody copies your images. Then you gotta do it again. That's okay. Title, I'm not gonna spend that much time on this one. Here's why. Title's mainly for keywords, right? We sacrifice the ability to use a headline, which is generally the most powerful thing that you can do in your marketing, to get traffic. I do think there's a balance here. I'm cognizant of the keywords, but I'm also cognizant of how titles can affect click-throughs, and I'm also cognizant of how they can affect conversion. We write to convert and to get clicks as well as to get keywords. More and more often, I'm going with shorter titles that specifically go after the main keyword that I want to start with. 
In competitive markets, we chip away with a secondary keyword that's not the most important, but that's what we make the full focus on. In, real, in markets that I don't think they're competitive, I'll go straight up with the main keyword, but I won't put these little nickel and dime keywords in there, right? Later on, I might test that, but lately I've been going with much shorter titles and finding that they work really good. Now, if all you guys start going with shorter titles, I'm back to long titles again, right? That's how it works. That's how you stand out. Keywords, I do it in the dumbest way possible. I take my main keyword and I start typing A, B, C, D. And every time I see them, I write them down, right? Keyword research, done. Then I pick the few that I like that I think seem to be the best. And I guess, and I stick them in there. I don't go to merchant words. I don't do any of that other stuff, right? You'd be amazed at what you can find just doing it the old-fashioned way here. And I get done. Keyword research takes me 10 minutes, and I, I consider that when I write the title. I really consider how the title affects the click-through rate. So if you put stuff like a trademark in there, that can help. If you, if you have a registered trademark, that can help. If you have a copyright, you could copyright anything, right? You have a copyright without technically doing anything. Now, could you defend it? I don't know. But anything that you create unique is, uh, is automatically copyrighted, right? You put a copyright in your title. What are you copywriting? The title itself? Yeah, okay, cool. It gets attention because it's a weird character, right? People use stars and tilds and stuff like that. These are all things that can make your title stand out. Put the word free in your title if you want to maximize some click-through rates. Give away a free ebook, but just put the word free in the title, and that is like a freaking magnet. Conversion. A lot of people don't realize this, but as of now, Amazon truncates titles around 111 characters to 113 characters. So this is what they're using as their call to action. Your stuffed animal clutter. Yes! The other ones don't even have titles that are long enough to show this, right? If instead you say 100% money back guarantee there, which I've taught our customers to do, that's the last thing they see before they click on the link. Does that make sense? If you put free there, dot, 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 that's the last thing they see. So if you can land the word free, 111 characters in, when they truncate your title, that's your call to action, right? They say free what? Click on it to find out. Once they're there, they're there. You, did you know about that one? My ASM customers who were smart enough to buy through my link knew about that one several months ago, right? There you go. Bullets are the most important piece of copy that you can actually write yourself, that you completely control. Images are the most important thing for conversion. Bullet points are the most important thing that you can have complete control of that you can write, okay? Now, do you know what the most powerful thing is that's written on your Amazon listing? Reviews. You ever have a product that has like 10 or 15 five-star reviews, you're just starting out, you're gaining traction, then you get that one-star review, and conversion goes from 19% to 8%? That's happened to us before. From one stupid one-star review. That's how important, that's how powerful reviews are. So if reviews are so important and so powerful, maybe we should write our bullet points as the ultimate review. If we can have an ultimate reviewer write it, that's how we write our bullet points, okay? So compare these two. Here's one. Our pea protein is formulated using only the highest quality pea protein isolate available. It's phenomenal. And amino acids profiles includes nine essential amino acids. Well, that sounds like a great review, right? Uh-uh. That sounds like some advertiser advertising something. Compared to this. No artificial taste, texture or smell, flavor is quite neutral, great for protein shakes, perfect if you've had issues with whey protein or gas indigestion problems from other protein powders. Does that sound like a review? It's a bullet point. Now you say to me, quite neutral, what a weird dumb phrase, right? Where do you think I got that? From a review. From somebody's review from some other uh, what, pea protein powder that's selling on Amazon. That's okay, it's transparent, it's all there. Here's what I want you to envision. Two friends chatting over a drink. One owns your product, and the other would be perfect for your product. What would the person who owns your product say to sell the person who doesn't own your product? Would they say, this contains no official amino acid blah blah blahs, right? No, that's what advertisers say. You don't want to sound like an advertiser, you want to sound like the ultimate reviewer in your bullet points. That's your tone that you write them in. Two friends sharing a drink, one convincing the other to buy, who's not a professional salesperson, right? 
writing bullets, pull out from review phrases, group them into themes, stitch them together. This is fun, it's like a game to me. It's like a crossword puzzle or something. I go through reviews, I read them, I pull out the cool phrases and then I combine them together. My goal is to have 50 benefits throughout my first four bullet points. I usually don't make it, I usually fail and only come up with 30 or 40, right? Which is about 35 more than my competition has, right? Let me give you an example of how this works. Here's a great review from somebody that bought some other pea protein powder. Look at these phrases. Body has never agreed with whey protein powders. I jot that down. Gives me a boatload of gas and indigestion. What a great phrase. A boatload of gas. <laughs> I'm writing that in the bullet point, right? Incredibly smooth. I'm writing that. No artificial taste, texture, and smell. Hey, where did I get that from, right? I already used that one. Turns me off right away. This is how we write. We combine those, you could stitch those together. That's one paragraph from one review. Imagine if you spent 30 minutes combing through reviews and pulling out phrases. When you're done, you'd have 200, 300, 400 phrases. Even if they're similar, who cares, right? If somebody's telling you that uh, they think you're sexy, do you care if they say that you're sexy, you're hot, you're attractive, you're voluptuous? Yeah, you, know, you say, bring it on, baby, keep coming, right? They all mean the same thing though, don't they? It doesn't matter, we use them all. You can group them into themes, sometimes this works and sometimes this does it. So you could take all the phrases you've jotted down and put them in for smell. You could have one whole bullet point related to the smell. If, that, if, if that's something people keep talking about over and over and over again in reviews, do you think that influences them from a purchasing decision? Yes, it does. Do we have to guess? No. When I sell at the highest level possible, and Matt says I'm one of the best, if not the best salesman he's ever seen, we have to know what the customer wants without them telling us. It's hard. Here the customer just tells us. It's easy, right? So we could say smell. We could group it into texture. And we could then do it into digestion. And we could do it into other stuff. Group them into themes. But even if we didn't, even if we just stitched them together, we will be 100% better than all the rest. Note. Save the fifth bullet point. Notice how I said the first four bullet points. That's what we do this with, right? Here's why. The fifth bullet point is a call to action. People buy in sections. This is true on webinars when I'm selling product. This is true on sales letters. This is true on Amazon. Some people will buy directly just from the images that they see. Cool, come on in. Some people will buy just from the bullet points because that's above the fold and they're, they can't be bothered to scroll down, right? Some people will buy from a review. Right? People buy in sections. So we end each section, just like that title trick I showed you, with a call to action. So it might be something like this. Order now with peace of mind due to our 60 day better than money back guarantee. No catches, see product description below for more info. So if they wanna read on, I've opened up a loop. If they don't wanna read on and buy, they already know. I risk nothing, right? That's what we typically will use for our fifth bullet point. Call to action. Description. This is the one that everybody focuses the most amount of their time on, your product description, right? They figure out ways to say, how can we sacrifice this one extra HTML character? Now we have one more character to write our product description with, yes! I'm telling you, the description is the least important part of your Amazon listing. It is, the least important part. It's the one that you wanna spend the least amount of time on because it has the least amount of influence. So here's a super simple way just to bang out this product description in no time flat. It's a simple process. I call it the lead, ownership, benefit, belief, guarantee, close. Okay? Now this is general, the easiest way. If I have nothing else to do, I follow this system. If you wanna get a little bit fancy, don't follow this system and come up with something that's your own. But if you can capture some of these things about ready to talk about, you'll be better than almost anybody, okay? But we have pushed product after product up the rank and they stick because the conversion stays really strong and these are the types of product descriptions that we use. Now I have formulated this thing and fine tuned it over the, <laughs> over the last year. It's pretty cool, let me show you how it works, right? Here's the lead. Your search for the perfect product type is finally over. When you purchase brand name product type today, 
here's what you should do. Now think about that. Your search for the perfect product is over with. What does that mean? It means we are the best, right? What else does it mean? People are searching for products on Amazon. It's a little tricky. That's why I'm one of the best salespeople in the world. I get, I get you on the level up here, the conscious one. I get you on the unconscious one too. I'm saying subtly yet effectively, quit wasting your time searching. Just buy this one. That's a benefit. It's a benefit for you to buy from me right now so you don't have to waste time searching anymore. That's the context behind it, right? When you purchase is assumptive. I don't think that they're not going to purchase. I tell them when you do purchase. So here's an example. Your search for the perfect pea protein powder is finally over. When you purchase stinky vegan hippie pea protein powder today, here's what you should do. (laughs) Yeah. I'm I'm thinking about going into that market. My, my, uh, my business partner, Wilson Matos, he won't let me uh, name it that. <laughs> he won't. Oh, well. Those, the suits won't let me do it. But that's an example. Brand name, your search for the yada, yada, yada. That's the lead. Step number two is ownership. When that cute little box from Amazon arrives at your door, rip it open the first chance you get. Take out product and admire the rich description of packaging. We call this ownership. If you can have somebody see themselves owning your product before they own it, if they buy in their mind, then it's easy to buy for real, right? They're now, I'm creating mental pictures of them opening the Amazon box, pulling it out. Now I put a little personality in there. I don't, if you start using cute little brown box, I'm gonna be mad at you, okay? Because everyone will know they were at ASM3 and they listened to Jason talk, yeah? So use your own flavor, but notice it has flavor. It's written interesting, it's spicy, whatever, right? Here's a specific example of this. When that cute little brown box from Amazon arrives from your door, rip it open first chance you get. Take out the stinky vegan hippie pea protein powder and admire the beautiful clear label. You have in your hands a 28 gram per serving, 100% pure non-GMO vegetable protein. I just worked in a whole bunch of benefits there. But now you're still seeing yourself holding my product before you've bought it. That helps me sell the product, right? Pretty clever stuff, isn't it? This is, this is clever. This is clever. And then you go on, you know? Note all those fancy certifications, such as the GMP quality assured authentication, you know? And you're just selling them. Without them realizing you're selling them. Everybody else get, goes and talks about their benefits. We're sneaking our benefits in. Pretty, pretty, pretty powerful. And then we go on with more benefits. Now, by the way, even if your product was no better than any other product that existed on your market, it was exactly the same in quality, you could still do that trick because it was just about a stupid label, right? Has nothing to do with the product. So you say, Jason, my product doesn't have any superiority over any other product. It's just as good. It's not better. It's not worse. It's just as good as every other one. What do I do? You market, that's what you do. You mar- your marketing is your superiority. Without ever talking about the product itself, we've already sold the product better than anybody else can sell it. So then we go even further, we say now, open product and use in a specific fashion. As you notice, notice benefit after benefit after benefit, right? But we're doing it in the context of a story, of ownership, right? Now pop open that lid and grab the single serving scooper. Plop a scoop into the cleanest cup nearest you and then mix it with your favorite drink. Water, almond milk, right? Wheat grass, whatever. Take a sip. Marvel at the underpowered flavor of the pea powder. In fact, most people say it's a neutral flavor, meaning you can mix it with whatever you want to flavor it exactly how you wish. And then you can continue to go on with that. You would obviously list a ton more benefits after that. But see how we're doing our benefits way differently than everybody else lists their benefits? People don't even realize they're being sold. They already see themselves owning and using the product. What separates product name and type from the competition? It's simple, really. It starts with, and then put the most damn complex stuff you can think of. It's simple, really. It starts with a goat in the Himalayan mountains. (laughs) So somebody says, that's not simple, but boy, because it sounds so complex, it must be really good, right? I don't get it, but I like it. <laughs> Serious here. 
What separates stinky, vegan, hippie, pee, pro town Peter from the competition powder? It's simple, really. It starts with how we isolate our pea protein. We specifically choose yellow peas, or Siam sativium, as our scientists like to refer to them, to get our protein from, right? If you wonder why we choose yellow peas, it goes all the way back to, you know, 4,800 years before we actually created time, right? Where Egyptians first reported medicinal properties from these peas, which has led them to be studied for the last 7,000 years. If you poured over this admittedly dry research, which I know you want to do, you come to the same conclusion that we have. That pea, pro- that pea powder is the best alternative protein to whey you can find. Now, I haven't made a claim that any one of a million other competitors can't make, right? But damn, does mine sound official, right? <sighs> Took them back 7,000 years. That's all I did. Simple, really, right? Perhaps that's why people like Dr. Oz get all excited when talking about protein powder. For example, he said on a show which originally aired on October 25th, 2012, and then you can put in claims, right? So you bring it to the modern day, too. But see how we sneakily put that in there? We got to make it credible. We got to have them believe that our product is better than the million other products that they can buy on Amazon. Now, he talked about pea protein powder. That's any pea protein powder, right? But because we're articulating it in a very specific fashion with a little bit of flavor, right? We win. Now what's next? The guarantee. This reverses the risk. It's because of this, and this is always how we transition. After you stick in those megaton of benefits and stuff and you get the belief, you say it's because of this, we're able to make a guarantee unlike any you've ever seen for product type. We call it our better than money back guarantee and here it is. See, everybody on Amazon talks about a money back guarantee. So we have a better than money back guarantee. Simple, right? That's how you stand out. It's because of this we're able to make a guarantee unlike any other you've seen for the pea protein powder. We call it our better than money back guarantee and here it is. Try our stinky vegan hippie pea protein powder for 60 days. If during that time you don't love the taste, the texture, you don't feel it was worth every penny of your investment today, we'll give you your full payment back, no questions asked. You're protected by this guarantee if you used one scoop or the whole thing. That's how confident we are. You'll be happy and keep coming back for more. <laughs> a little future pacing there. A little future pacing. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Better than money back because you can return it empty and we'll still give you your money back, right? And then you close. It's really simple. So order now when you do consider getting two. One for you and one for your very best friend. See, us internet marketers, we're so forgetful that when we sell ebooks and video courses, nobody buys more than one, right? Because it's a freaking electrons in space. They don't need more than one. On Amazon, people have been conditioned to buy more than one. So let's help them buy more than one. Now, the way I phrase this, and there's some, I have a several uh, variations of this clothes I use. Sometimes you say for uninterrupted usage, right? One for home and one for on the road, right? There's many of them that I have in my devious brain, right? This is just an example of one. Now this one's very powerful because what does it imply? This thing is so good. This thing is so good that you need, if you love your friend, you would get him one, right? Mm, We're driving that in deep. You would not believe the number of people who had this one stupid line at the end, which is the most important place to put it, at the end, okay, and their, their average order per client goes up, right? Now, if I see another listing that says, click the add to cart button now, because you watched Matt's video on how to write a listing, I'm gonna go crazy, right? Because I can find all you ASMers a million miles away because you all use the same call to action, right? Click, and by the way, click the add to cart button, now I think it's too forceful. It's not how people are used to buying on Amazon. So I say, so order now. Because when they think about Amazon, I think at least, that they think about ordering stuff, not clicking the add to cart button, right? That's the refinement of the approach. Then we've tested this over and over again, and it works, right? So we talked about images. Did you get some ideas from that? (laughs) Hell yeah. (laughs) 
talked about the title. Learned something new, didn't you? Woo! Talked about the bullets. Easy, actually. You just do some research. You don't have to be creative. But do you think if you had 40 or 50 bullet points, do you think you can do that, first of all, 40 or 50 benefits? Yeah. Do you think that would increase your conversion, which means no new traffic, more money. I love money. Some people say, Jason, how can you be passionate about pea protein powder? I say, I'm not. I'm passionate about the money. Right? The money. The money. Description. We made a very simple, plain language description. There are some exceptions of when you want to do different types of descriptions, but that's the default one that I always turn to. It's formulamatic. We can have somebody write it for us. We don't even have to write them ourselves after a while once we get it down. And it's very, very simple. And if you do this, and you do this with this flavor, you will stand out from the competition in every single instance that you can think of. I called this the Little Hinges Amazon.com conversion system because none of this is complicated. I have some very complicated things I could teach you. You do not need them. You need the simple tweaks. Some of this stuff takes mere minutes to put in there, right? My theory has always been this in business. Let's find the little hinges that swing big doors. So if you envision a giant vault where money's behind it, the biggest vault in the world is moved by the smallest hinges that hold it together, right? So in anything you do, and this goes way beyond just the product optimization here today, anything you do related to Amazon, you must ask yourself, what are the small, simple, easy things I can do that are gonna return the majority of results? My name is Jason Fladlin. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Cool, doing some questions? Yeah, I got, I got nine minutes left, right? You got nine minutes, so I'm thinking we're going to want some questions. Um, Actually, that uh, sounded like he nailed it. Did he do awesome? We, ac we actually started a little late, so we're right, on, we're right on time. Like We need to go to break now. Oh, we're actually behind time. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm sorry. We got one question. <laughs> she nailed it. Nobody else. She gets <laughs> one question. I'll be here all weekend, too. So my question is about the space. I don't have so much space in my description as you described in all the, the examples you gave. So uh, when I wrote my first description, I kind of did it after what you were teaching, and then I had to shrink it down to half, and I just couldn't do it that way. Yeah. Well, then you just less benefits, less description, maybe get rid of the brown box example, right? You start with, and you write without being aware of the limitation of how much you can put in your product description. And then if it doesn't fit, you go back and you start cutting out the least important stuff. Then you try to jam it back in there. Then you, if you can, you come back and cut out the least important stuff, which is, by the way, how all writing should be, right? You write more than you need so you can get rid of the weak stuff, and then you're only left with the most important stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah, but and even, by the way, even if you can't get it to work and you go with something simple, keep in mind the product description is the least important part of your listing. Spend that time instead on optimizing your images better or your bullet points, right? Okay. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. All right, let's hear it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks.